Barrett could have said that on Monday, but he actually said that two years ago. Two years ago. Dodger fans will be booing the Giants left fielder for the next 200 years. That's how they roll out west. Here's Barry. Barry Bonds. In a shocking upset, Dodger fans booed Barry Bonds. And as you saw, the commissioner, Bud Selig, in attendance. Here's Barry on an 0-2 check job. Don't even have to go down a third for the appeal. That's a punch out on his first at bat. Barry's second at bat. We're at the top of the third. We're tied at one and we're first base open. You know what's coming next. And Barry's daughter lets the Dodgers know she thinks they're afraid to pitch to her old man. As it turns out, Grady Little's decision pays off. Gets Ryan Klesko to ground in the double play. Strategy works out for the Dodgers. Here's Barry's third at bat. Top of the sixth. Still tied at one all. Sort of a half swing at a 2-0 pitch. It's now 3-1. And Barry takes ball four. Brad Penny, always demonstrative on the mound. Hey, where was that pitch? Apparently the umpire thought it was hot. Here's Barry's fourth at bat now. Top of the seventh. Giants have a 3-1 lead. Barry takes a strike from Joe Bimel. Even his teammate Omar Vizquel, the camcorder, hoping to see history. Bonds later in the at bat pops it up in a shallow left. Rafael Furcal can't make the catch. Whoopsie. So Barry's safe first to the amusement of Bonds' daughter. Another look. You'll see. You get the sense Bonds thought that was a pitch he could have done some damage with. Didn't like his swing. Takes his bats. He's headed for the clubhouse. The Giants 4-0 at Dodger Stadium. They win. Participate, of course. His next will be his 500th family in tow, hoping to see history early on. Bottom one, Derek Jeter, 0-2 count. Did he check the swing? Tom Hallian says he did. Ozzie Guillen has something to say to Phil Cuzzy, and Phil Cuzzy says, be more constructive with your feedback, please. <laughs> Guillen empties his pockets. He will not go until he has his say. He makes his points, and he walks away, leaving the game. It's a good thing he didn't have to watch this. Bobby Abreu, a three-run shot of Jose Contreras, his 214th career home run. So that's in front of Rodriguez. Here comes A-Rod. 3-2 pitch. Got a lot of it, not enough of it. Fly ball to right field. The next batter, though, is Hideki Matsui, and the Yanks enjoy a home run sandwich. Solo shot off the bat of Matsui, number 98 for him, his 20th of the season. Yankees lead this one 4 nothing in the bottom of the first. Second at bat for Rodriguez, bottom three. Once again, that trademark follow-through, has he done it? No, the stadium will hold it. But later in the inning, it's Robinson Cano. He hammers a three-run shot to right center. 38th career home run for Cano, the ninth of the season for him. It's at 7-3 Yankee lead. Later in the inning, Melky Cabrera. He rips a home run. 13th of the career for him, sixth of the season. It's 9-3. Third at bat. Can he get 500? This was a story all throughout the night. Flash bulbs lighting up the New York summertime night like, like lightning bugs. Jermaine Dye here makes a fantastic grab. Wasn't going to be a home run. Would have been a double, but that's a nice, nice play, certainly, from the right fielder. Posada. Thorough in the burrow, because that's a must. It's a home run for him. 2-10 for Jorge. It's 11-3. Fourth at bat. This was the one time that Rodriguez didn't at least make pretty solid contact. Flies out to shallow left. But Hideki Matsui, he's not closing in on 500. He's closing in on 100. And once again, Matsui just hammers the offering. That's 99 for him. 13 to 3 Yankees. Bottom seven. And as Rodriguez just like, can I borrow one of these? Damon goes down and pounds this into the upper deck. 15-3. Fifth home run of the season for Damon, 160th, 160th of his career, and now Rodriguez just started to smile a little bit. It's like, man, please. Shelly Duncan, what? Shelly Duncan has left Yankee Stadium. The fourth in his career. 54 runs the last three home games for the Yankees. Franchise record tied with eight home runs in the game. Duncan's going nuts one more time for Rodriguez. His fifth at bat. And he gets a 2-0 fastball, and he drills it, but it's a line drive to center. Afterwards, he gives the bat to a young fan. Standing ovation for Rodriguez, and it's all smile.
Last member of that exclusive club shutting the door behind times. They are a change in some Met fans showing up in Milwaukee. And of course, Glavin's family, that's his wife Christine, made the trip to root him on. Top of the six, Mets were down one nothing. Jose Reyes at third with one out. David Wright through the drawn in infield. That'll tie the game. Glavin's going nuts in the uh, all right, maybe not going nuts in the dugout. It's not really his style. Still the sixth, first and third, one out for Moise Salou. Flies out. That'll be deep enough for David Wright to score the go-ahead run. Glavin, his family, excited. Glavin losing his mind in the dugout. Not really there. Still cool and Settle calm. Settle down, Tom. Rain it in. Part of the focus. Kevin Mench shoots one to right. Sean Green coming on. What a grab that is. Going all out for Glavin. Mets played great defense behind Glavin. Really, all their other pitchers in this one. First batter in the seventh is Damian Miller. That's a single. That's all for Glavin. He left with a 2-1 lead, but that runner is his responsibility. His family waiting nervously. Aaron Heilman on in relief. Heilman is at H for hold. Gets Tony G, Tony Graffinino to grab him the 3-6, three double play, which you can never assume. Glavin watching the whole thing. He's going nuts. Wild man, crazy. <laughs> Not a whole lot of company for him in that dugout. To the eighth now, Pedro Feliciano. He's the second reliever, the runner on first. Hits Prince Fielder on the elbow. Remember, Glavin's in position to win this game right now. So it's first and second. Here's Guillermo Mota. It is the third reliever. And Bill Hall drills Mota's first pitch for a double. J.J. Hardy scores to tie the game. So yeah. Glavin cannot win, and he cannot lose. Bottom of the ninth, still a 2-2 game. You know, the Mets are the only team in baseball that does not have a walk-off loss this season. Uh-oh, when you put that up, you know what's coming. Here's Bill Hall to shallow right center with the base loaded two outs, and Lasting's Millage coming on. Told you they played some defense behind all the Met pitchers, not just Clavin. Willie likes it when he sees. Easy with those arms, Willie. Mets avoid the walk-off loss for now. Here are the 12th with a runner on second. Damian Miller to center, and it's Millage again. That's no replay. Millage keeps the game alive for the Mets. Now, you know in Milwaukee, after the sixth inning, they do the sausage race, yeah. right? They did it after the 12th, too. A second sausage race. And the hot dog wins this one. Bonus sausage race for you. We go to the bottom of 13. Jeff Jenkins, his third career walk-off home run. That off Aaron Seeley. And the Brewers win it. Glavin still merely a 299-game winner. We're just a little bit sketchy. Heron in the top of the second, nobody out, one on. A's already down, one nothing. The mayor, Sean Casey, just hammers that one into the gap. Carlos Guillen comes in to score, and the Tigers are up two to nothing. But both pitchers would settle in. We get our pitchers duel, and things are sort of grooved as we play the bottom of the sixth. It's three to one, and this is a harmless ground ball from Mark Kotze to Carlos Guillen. But watch him sort of double clutch, can't get it out of his glove, and Kotze reaches first, and it seems like from there, Verlander just came totally unglued. Marco Scudero can't get around on the 93 mile an hour fastball, but that's all right. He serves it into right. Two on. Two batters later, one out. Runners on second and third. Kurt Suzuki into left field. And now the game is tied up at three apiece. And Verlander, who is over 100 pitches at this point, comes out of the ball game. But he's on the hook. He could get the loss. McKay, McKay McBride now, bases loaded, facing Jack Cust. And he stings this one into right. A couple of runs come in to score. Dan Heron's first win in four career starts against Detroit. Verlander takes the loss. Ivan O with a 1.57 ERA in his last five starts. Could the Rangers solve this Cleveland Indian? Top of the fifth, scoreless streak at 22 innings, and it's over. Nelson Cruz crushes one. How about 446 feet? Wow. Carmona's streak. History at 22 innings. Next inning, base loaded. Marlon Bird grounds to Casey Blake. He can't make the play. Ian Kinzer scores. Michael Young scores. Give Blake the error. Give the Rangers a 3 0 lead. Out of the eighth, Ranger skipper Ron Washington decides to go with CJ Wilson. You know that they don't have Eric Gagne anymore. Wilson strikes out Grady Sizemore, strikes out Jason Michaels. Bottom of the ninth, two outs, last chance for the Tribe. And Wilson gets Ryan Garko to line out softly. That's his first save. Indians could have moved into first place with a win, except they lost. 4-0, an ERA that starts with a zero. About 0 0.62, 41 strikeouts, 29 innings. Josh Beckett, he too, pretty good. 
Brian Roberts, though, drives the Beckett pitch. First pitch of the game, up and out. Roberts' ninth career leadoff home run. Now, here's Bedard looking for a seventh consecutive victory. David Ortiz does what Roberts did to Beckett. Gone. Ortiz first homer off a lefty all season. And first of two home runs for him in the game. Red Sox are out 4-2. Base load in the fourth. One down. Bedard strikes out William O'Pena, who even after the deadline is still a member of the Red Sox. Next batter, Bedard gets Julio Lugo looking. Julio thought it was low. Bedard gave up two runs on two hits. Actually walked five, but then strike out six over six innings. Manny Ramirez in the foul territory. Nick Markakis. He caught that? That's a tough grab. And to the faithful at Fenway, wow. the Orioles go on to win 5-3. Kevin Garnett had some company among high-profile players coming to Boston on Tuesday. Red Sox acquiring a Rangers closer Eric Gagne. In exchange for Case and Gabbard and two minor leaguers, Gagne expected to take the load off of setup man Hideki Okajima. Atlanta with a chance to gain some ground in the East. Bobby Cox penciled in Julio Franco's name at first. Soon it will be Mark Teixeira. Kelly Johnson steps in. Bottom four. And it's business time, baby. Home run for Johnson, his 11th. Here, Johnson with a whoopsie. Ground ball through the legs. Off Eric Munson's bat. As the throw comes in, gets past Edgar Renteria. Eric Brunton will try to score. That was ill-advised. Chipper Jones will get him at the dish. And that ends the inning. Bottom of the seventh. Guess who's back in the A? Fellow who played his college ball at Georgia Tech. There he is. Mark DeShera shaking hands, making friends. Hi, everybody. I'm here. One more time. It's Johnson. Two home runs in the game. He was four for four. Four home runs in the game for Atlanta, who had 15 hits. They get the win. Now, who made out, who struck out at the trade deadline? John Bucci Gross with all the info. Cubs, lousy teams in April, might be playoff teams in October. Chris Roberson called up from AAA. He batted 195 last year in the bigs here off Jason Marquis. Brings in Pat Burl. Roberson went four for four in his debut this time around. Marquis here dealing to Burl in the game tied, and this is an ouchie. Fouls it off the inside of the kneecap. That has got to hurt a whole bunch. But Burl stays in the game, and for Philly fans, it's a good thing he did. 3-2 pitch. High and deep to left center field. It's got a chance. Ada here. Phillies take a 3-2 lead, but it would not be oh happy day for the Philly faithful. Jock Jones, runners on first and second. Double's clearly going to get Cliff Floyd home, but when Burrow bobbles it, which is an error, and then doesn't exactly get it into the infield in a big fat hurry, it allows Mark DeRosa to come flying around and slides niftily under the tag of Chris Coast. Four to three, the Cubs take the lead. They would add a few more, and happy times on the north side continue. Seattle's won four straight. They trail the LA Angels of San Luis Obispo, El Segundo by three. Gary Matthews Jr. <laughs> doing his part to lengthen that lead. Here he crushes a shot. Straight away center puts the Angels up two to nothing. That's off Jeff Weaver. Top nine in a seven to nothing game. He's done it again. Professional gentleman of leisure on the stroll. Four for five, two home runs, two doubles, three ribbies for Matthews. John Lackey here to Kenji Jojima. Pops it up, way up. Shut out for Lackey earlier in the show. Said he didn't need his best stuff. Apparently he had it. Angels gave him a bunch of runs. He deals well. Seven hits, five Ks. A shutout for the Angels, eight nothing. Well, the Padres, despite dropping seven of their last ten, still just a half game out behind the Diamondbacks and Dodgers heading into Tuesday night action. Top of the second, scoreless runner on. Stephen Drew nails at the center. Mike Cameron goes back. You know how hard it is for the home run to center for oh. San Diego. Cameron gives it the A effort, but the fan actually catches it. Watch this. The fan gets it and high fives Cameron. Give him the ball. Maybe Cameron's notice. a cool customer. Next batter, Mark Reynolds, the center. I mentioned Cameron's a cool cat chasing it down. Tremendous play. Again, that was the very next batter. Guy's got to be out of gas, right? Bottom of the third, Adrian Gonzalez facing Brandon Webb with a runner on. Gonzalez goes down swinging. Bottom six, Khalil Green. Webb, seven innings, three hits, no runs allowed. Second straight season, the Padres fire their hitting coach midseason. Time now for your top plays. First batter of the ball game for the Orioles hit a home run. First batter of the ball game for the Red Sox hit a fly ball. Corey Patterson makes that catch right there. Spectacular. Throwing the grass out there. <laughs> the police played in concert. Oh, there you go. 
Saturday and Sunday out of Fenway. LA Galaxy, FC Dallas. There's no Beckham, but there is Joe Cannon. Tremendous save. Galaxy. Number seven, Blue Jays and Devil Rays. Akinori Omura hits it deep to center. Vernon Wells goes back and gives you the A effort. Blue Jays get hit in the head with a piece of pizza. Charging error to the fans there. At number five, the Royals and Twins. Tory Hunter the shot. David DeJesus going up and over to make the grab. But then there's a little smile, right? Now, Millage made a couple of great plays in that game. Diamondbacks Padres game. Adrian Gonzalez to left. Eric Burns. Burns has one or two incredibly athletic plays every single season. He does. And number one in the hood, G Money, something like that. Oh, Reds, Nationals. The aqua team like that. Jeff Kepinger, the grounder, hits off Saul Rivera. Ronnie Belliard, the field and flip behind his back. For the incredible force at second. Even better, it all comes in a national 6 3 victory. This is out here twice a week.